In this video, we will be learning the basics of Midjourney. And welcome to our complete guide to Midjourney series. This series will be broken up into different videos, which we will have linked below. I will be guiding you through everything there is to know about Midjourney. And I will make sure to update this series with new videos as more updates get added to Midjourney. So make sure to hit that notification bell so you get updated as soon as we release new videos. So in this first video, I'm just going to take you through the basics of Midjourney, how to set up an account, and some of the basics of creating an image, and a run through of the settings. There are a lot of features in Midjourney, and that's why we've broken it up into different videos, as we don't want to overwhelm you. Feel free to look through the chapters on this video and skip to any part you want, because I do realize that some of you may already have a Midjourney account, but want to just jump to specific parts. Let's look at creating an account. To start off with, you want to head to midjourney.com. And as you'll see, there are some options at the bottom of the page. There's the Get Started button, which contains loads of documents to help you get started with Midjourney. And there's the Showcase button, now the showcase button is great for finding inspiration. It contains loads of user created artwork. And I often jump in there just to see what people are creating as it can spark some really cool ideas. You can hover over the image and you can actually copy the prompts that they use to make this image, which is extremely useful. But we'll get into prompts shortly. There's a join the beta button and that is to go into Midjourney itself. But to start off with, you need a Discord account. If you already have one, just click into the Join the Beta button. If not, then click on the Sign In button, which will take you to a Discord sign in page. Just complete the sign up process to make your Discord account. Then, to make a Midjourney account, click Join the Beta. Okay, once you're in there, you just have to create a display name. Once you've set up your Midjourney account, you'll see a page like this. It may look a bit confusing with all of these different tabs everywhere and so on. On the left hand side, you can see there are multiple pages for Midjourney. It helps keep you up to date with what's happening with Midjourney. So as you can see, they've got announcements. So this will contain all the latest news that they're rolling out, all the rules, getting started, community updates, and so on. So feel free to check out these pages just to get a feel for it and you can jump into the newbies page if you want to quickly make up a piece of art. It is a really fun page to go into as you can see what other people are creating and it might spark some ideas for you. But the problem is your artwork could get lost with all the other pieces of art on that page. So the best thing to do is to create your own Midjourney server, which we will do in a second. But to make art on Midjourney, you do need a subscription. There used to be a free model, but that is no longer available. So let's have a quick look at the plans. So you have a basic, standard, pro and mega plan. Now you can either do these monthly or pay yearly for this subscription. With the yearly subscription, you do get it at a bit of a cheaper price. With the basic plan, you are limited to about 200 generations per month, but it could be a great way just to get started into it. And if you realize you're really enjoying it and want to create more art, then you can just move to the standard plan with no problem. And with the standard plan, you can see it's unlimited relaxed generations. You'll see there are fast generations and relaxed generations. Fast generations is as what it says. It just means that the artwork will get generated quicker. So I believe that the standard plan is a really good sweet spot. As if you run out of your fast generations, you can always fall back on the unlimited relaxed generations. Okay, so now we're going to set up our Midjourney server. All you have to do is come down to the bottom left here and you'll see the plus icon. Just click on that and go to create my own. If it's just for yourself, I would go for me and my friends and then create your server name and upload your own profile picture and click create. Okay, once you've set up your server, now we're going to add Midjourney into it. So if you just come up here in the top left, just click on that little down arrow and go to app directory. Then once in here, just type in Midjourney, and it should be at the top. And just click add to server. Select the server that you made and click continue and then authorize. And just go through the security checks. 
And there you go, you have your own mid-journey server to start creating art. And this is great, as all your own artwork will be separate from all the publics. So it just makes it easy to look through. And you can create multiple servers. So if you want a server just for maybe logo designs, you can do just that. Just a quick note here. I will mainly be using the version 5.2 mid-journey model in this video. There may be newer versions out as you are watching this, so feel free to use them. But if you would like to get the same results I'm getting in this video, I would advise you to use the 5.2 model. The same rules should mostly apply to all models. Okay, back to the video. So now let's have a look at the settings. So to access the settings, all you have to type is forward slash settings into the text box and press enter. And all the settings should pop up. Now you'll see this little drop down box here. At the time of recording this video, we are on mid journey version 5.2. But if you click on this box, you do have access to all the previous models. So we've got 5.1, we've got Niji model v5, we've got mid journey model v5, all the way down to version 1. You may be wondering why have they included all the older models if now we've got the best version of it? Well, some people actually like the look of the older models. As you can see here, all the models are very different, and it just shows you how much mid journey has changed. We will be covering Niji model in a separate video all on its own. What Niji model does best is it makes an image look like an anime and gives it anime styles and anime aesthetics. But we'll cover this more in another video. So we have raw mode here. Now what raw mode does is it creates a more realistic looking image. So with these stylized values, the low stylization values produce images that are closely matched to the prompt, but are less artistic. Whereas the high stylization values create images that are very artistic, but are less connected to the prompt. With public mode, it just means that your images can be found by other users. Remix mode means you can alter images after you've created them. High variation mode and low variation mode means if you want to alter an image, it will either make a lot of changes or less changes. Turbo mode will generate images the fastest, and then second fastest is fast mode, and then you have relax mode. And last on the list is reset settings. So let's get started by creating an image. Before creating any image, you always have to put forward slash imagine in the text box, and make sure to put a space after. So type in forward slash imagine, and then press space bar, and you'll notice a prompt box will pop up. It's within this prompt box that we will include the description of our image we want to make. So I'll just add a random prompt. And for this one, I'll use Ninja Cat. So I've typed in Ninja Cat into that prompt box and press enter. As you can see, I'm using the fast mode and you can see the percentage of the image being generated. And as you can see, they look really cool. We've got some awesome looking Ninja Cats here. And this just shows you how powerful the Mid Journey engine is. Each image is quite different, but it has a really cool artistic style to it. And this is just from a very simple prompt. I only wrote in two words and this is what it created. So just imagine what you'll be able to create with a really detailed prompt, which we will go into in other videos in this series. And you may have noticed there are these boxes underneath the images. U stands for upscale. Upscale 1 belongs to the top left. Upscale 2 is the top right. Upscale 3 is bottom left, and Upscale 4 is bottom right. If you create an image that you like and you would like a bigger version of it, just click the Upscale button that corresponds with that image. So I really like the top right image, so I'll click on U2, which is Upscale Image 2. And then Midjourney sends you an upscaled version of that image. You may notice there are some extra options now under that image, and don't get too confused as we will cover them in a different video. We just won't get into it right yet. And if you would like to save this image, what I usually do is just click on the image to make it big, and then right click and save image as. And this will just save it to your computer. We won't go into all the settings in today's video, but you can see there is upscale two times and upscale four times. This will do what you just did before, but make it even bigger. There is also the reroll button, which does the prompt again and gives you four different outputs if the initial four weren't what you're looking for. So we'll click that and see what kind of images it gives us. And I'll just keep the same prompt and click submit. 
and again it created four amazing images. Some really cool ninja cats. And now let's have a look at the variation buttons. So they work just like the upscale buttons in terms of where the images correspond to. So let's try change one. So I'm going to click on V2, which will create a variation on that top right image. So it should look similar, but with a few differences. And these turned out really nicely. And as you can see, they do look very similar, but there are just slight subtle differences. It's perfect if you like an image, but it wasn't quite what you were looking for. Now let's try the same prompt, but in raw mode. These actually look pretty real as well. And that's a really cool thing about raw mode. If you weren't looking for quite, say, a illustration or kind of artistic style image, definitely check out raw mode. As these look super realistic, unlike someone's just dressed their cat as a ninja. And so now let's try the ninja cat prompt, but in Niji style this time, and it should give us an anime look. And they look really cool. It looks straight out of an anime or like manga comic. I will do a more in-depth look at the Niji version in another video in this series. Now let's have a quick look at prompt parameters. A parameter is added at the end of a prompt. These parameters can range from changing aspect ratios to choosing the mid-journey model versions, and lots more. And we have a video focusing only on parameters in this series, so please check that out. But for this video, I'm just going to show you a basic parameter which is very useful, and this is changing the aspect ratio. As mid-journey's default aspect ratio is only one by one, which is a square aspect ratio. These are some of the most common aspect ratios to use. If you want to create a more landscape image, then what you'll want to do, at the end of the prompt, you'll want to add in space hyphen hyphen AR 16 colon 9. So I've chose 16 by 9, which is an aspect ratio that is most commonly used for like, say, monitors and TVs. And there we go, a ninja cat in landscape aspect ratio. And say you want to create an image for social media, like on Instagram or something, and you want it to fill the mobile phone view, then I would say the 4x5 aspect ratio is good. Or you can do a reverse of the landscape one, which would be 9x16. Now this has created a perfect portrait style image that I can use for social media. There are many more parameters in Midjourney to advance your prompts, and we've made a video just on that in this series, so please feel free to check that out below. Okay, I believe we've covered the basics of Midjourney in this video. I hope this gets you really excited to start making some amazing artworks, and you're going to love the rest of this series, as we will cover everything that Midjourney has to offer. So please watch the rest of the videos in this series, and you will become a master at Midjourney. Feel free to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And click the thumbnail on the screen to check out another incredible video in our Ultimate Mid Journey Guide series. You won't want to miss it.